Welcome to day eight of our virtual instruction. Uh, in case you forgot who I am, it's been a while. I'm Mr. Mac. I uh, just want to let you all know I'm missing you a lot, and I hope you're doing well. I hope uh, uh, you're, you're finding these lessons as useful as they can be with our situation. And um, it seems like everybody's doing pretty well from what I can see on my end. You know, I haven't, uh, I haven't seen anybody yet in office hours this week. Those office hours are at 10 on Friday. I had a meeting today, so it wasn't the normal Wednesday. Um, so make sure you're using those to ask questions when you don't understand stuff. I got you. And, and uh, yeah, we're going to be diving some more into lines, and in particular graphing lines today. And I'm going to show you uh, two different ways on each one of these on how to graph the line, like a way that will always work to graph any line. And then once you kind of identify some things about structure of lines, you can use a couple shortcuts. So I'll give you both. Um, in the Go Formative, uh, there's directions for each question on how you're going to graph the line in Go Formative. It's actually relatively easy to do, so just uh, make sure I can clearly see what your line is so I'll be able to grade it. And um, just thank you for working so hard. All of you that have been working hard, I've been, uh, been able to see that on my end. So let's get to it. So graphing lines. I apologize for that beep. I'm not sure what makes that happen, but it happens. All right. So here is my linear function, y equals 1 third x plus 2. Uh, because of this plus 2, it's not going to go through the origin, so we might already identify this as non-proportional from previous lessons. And you've already done this a little bit. My favorite way, if I don't know what else to do to graph a line, is to make my xy table. Because of that coefficient of 1 third, I'm going to choose domain of negative 3, 0, and 3 to substitute into my function because it'll play nice with my fraction. So if I substitute in an x value of negative 3, 1 third of negative 3 is negative 1, negative 1 plus 2 is 1. If I substitute in 0, 1 third of 0 is 0, plus 2 is 2. And if I substitute in 3, a third of 3 is 1, and 1 plus 2 is 3. And here I have some ordered pairs to plot from my graph. And once I have my ordered pairs, if I connect the, connect the points, I have myself a line. And this line extends forever. It's all the solutions for this whole equation. So let's get into the shortcut for this one, though. There is a little shortcut. So if I don't want to use this uh, xy table, I can identify a really specific point. So this equation is what's called slope-intercept form. And when x is 0, this term is always going to be gone, which means when x is 0, that number is always going to be my y-intercept. So in this case, my y-intercept is 2. And why that's important, it means I know this spot right there. Every time in this format, y equals mx plus b, this number is going to be the y-intercept, or where it crosses the y-axis, right here. When x is 0, y is 2. And we had that on our xy chart, too. The next piece of information this equation gives us is the slope. It's doing a third for each change in x. And you might remember... Uh, from when we were back in school weeks ago when we were doing slope, some, some verbiage we used was rise over run, or the change in y over the change in x, or we used triangles, the vertical to the horizontal of a triangle. So if we have a one-third slope, that means the vertical of our triangle is 1, and the horizontal of our triangle when we're looking at similar triangles was 3. So, or another way to look at it is up 1 over 3, either way. So we get that triangle, the up 1 over 3, like from back in the day in class. And all you really need is two points to graph a line. And you might even notice these two points were from our xy table. Here's a 0, 2 from our xy table. And here's our 3, 3 from our xy table. Uh, technically, you only need two points for a line. So we can plot a point we know, the y-intercept, and then we can apply the slope to that point to get a line. So that's kind of the shortcut. But the xy table still works if you want to do it that way. So let's look at number two. If we're going to do an xy table, negative 1, 0, 1, just look like some nice numbers. If I, and I remember, I'm substituting those x values in there for x to pump out y values in my function here. When I substitute negative 1 in for x, I get negative 2 times negative 1 is 2 
minus 2 is 0. When I substitute in 0 for x, I get negative 2 times 0 is 0, minus 2 is negative 2. When I substitute in 1 in for x, I get negative 2 minus 2 is negative 4. So here's negative 1, 0. Here's 0, negative 2. And here's 1, negative 4. And, you know, if you don't get a line, something went down. All these are going to make a line. So there is my line for my xy table. Now, let's use those two pieces of information we knew last time for the shortcut. I know when x is 0, y is negative 2. It also shows that right here in my xy table. That is my y-intercept. That means... I know, with just looking at that equation in this format, y equals mx plus b, I know that it's going to cross the y-axis at my b value of negative 2. Next, I know I have a slope of negative 2, which means I have a rise, let me change the color here, a rise of negative 2 and a run of 1. That means I have to have a second point right there. So negative slope, if you remember back to class, that slope dude uh, video we watched, so it's nice, negative. He'd be going down the hill. Nice, negative. Um, and I have a rise of negative 2 and a run of 1. That is my slope. So that's kind of the shortcut way. We have another slope intercept here. Let's do it the shortcut way first this time. I know by looking at this equation right away that I have a y-intercept of negative 1. That tells me my line is going to cross right there. I also know, and this is kind of a hidden coefficient, the sneaky one, in front of this x here, it has to be a 1, because 1 times x is x. So I know I have a rise and run of 1. 1 over 1 is 1, right? So there has to be my second point. There's my line. It has a y-intercept of negative 1 and a slope of 1. Now you can still use the xy table. Maybe use negative 1, 0, 1. So when x is negative 1, y equals negative 2. There's that point. We didn't have it on the graph, but it's, it's on that graph if we extend it. When x is 0, y is negative 1. That's that point right there that we had before. And when x is 1, y is 0. That's that point right there. So we still use two of the same three points. We just have a shortcut we can use here with the y-intercept and the slope. Because remember, we can make a line out of two points. All right, so let's do the shortcut way again. Remember, y equals slope x plus b. So the y-intercept, I could just pluck that off there and know where it crosses the y. It, costs, it crosses the y-axis at 3. When x, when x is 0, y is 3. That's that point right there. Now, I know I need a slope of 4. And a 4, remember, is the same as the fraction 4 over 1. So I need a rise of 4 and a run of 1. And I'm drawing it like this because I'm hoping you remember those similar triangles we found on a line when we were still at school. So remember, this little triangle part's not actually part of the line. It's just the similar triangle. But there's two points. There's our line. If you want to do an xy table, we could do negative 1, 0, 1. When x is negative 1, I get negative 4 plus 3 is negative 1. So negative 1, negative 1. And I didn't draw my line perfect, but it does go through there. If I substitute in 0, I get 3. That's that point right there. And if I substitute in 1, I get 7. There's my point 1, 7 right there. Cool. So whichever way is vibing for you, do it. Maybe do both. Practice both. This one you might know is not in y equals mx plus b. This is actually called standard form. And so um, this is supposed to be y. My bad. So there's a couple ways to do this one as well. You can stick with your xy, okay, and I'll plug in a couple numbers. You're going to have to do some algebra. So when I plug in negative 1 for x, you're going to have to do something like negative 3 minus 2y equals 6. And then you're going to have to solve for y. There's going to be quite a bit of algebra involved here. So y is negative 4 and a half. You're not going to want to do all that algebra. So I'm going to give you another way when you get it in standard. Two other ways you can do it in standard form, okay? Way 1 in standard form would be to solve for y. And that means you're going to get it to look like that y equals mx plus b that we've been rocking. So to do that, you would subtract 3x from both sides. That would leave you with negative 2y equals negative 3x plus 6. And you would divide everything by negative 2 to get y equals 3 halves x minus 3. So now, you have an equation in slope-intercept form where we can pluck off the y-intercept of negative 3. And, and we can have a 3 halves slope. That's, that's one way. 
my personal favorite is understanding my intercepts. So no matter where I'm at on my y-intercept, my x value is 0. And no matter where I'm at on my x-intercept, my y value is 0. So what I'd like to do is I like to plug 0 in for x, see what y would be. Because 3 times 0 is 0. Negative 2y equals 6. So y has to equal negative 3. And check it out, guys. Right here. When x is 0, y is negative 3. There's that point. It's on my line already from the other way I did it. Now, that's, that's the, that's the y-intercept. To find the x-intercept, I'm going to plug 0 in for y. So I would have 3x minus 2 times 0 equals 6. Because no matter where I'm at across this line, I'm not left or right at all. Or, sorry. No matter where I'm at across this line, I'm not up or down at all. So that's why my y value is 0. I, it doesn't even matter where across that line, I know my y value is 0. So anything times 0 is 0, that's gone. That means 3x equals 6 which means x equals 2. So when y is 0, x equals 2, check that out. When y is 0, x is 2, that's that, that's that point right there. I got the same two points either way I did it. The reason I like the substitute 0 thing is, is with a little practice, I can look at that function and I can just tell you 3 times 2 is 6, so the x has to be right here. And I can tell you negative 2 times negative 3 is 6, so the y has to be right there. With a little practice, you can just look at the equation and get there. So guys, I know there's a lot coming at you. I know it's not the same as being in the classroom. Uh, so make sure you know, you're know you giving it your best effort, fixing mistakes. You'll have a key um, to this at the end. You know, you got you to gotta give it a good to honest try first. Get some good answers down. Try to fix it once or twice and then check the key if you need to. Um, but, but you can get good things done still. Hit me up on those office hours. And uh, I can't wait till I can see you and maybe high-five you when I see you. That'd be cool. Uh, maybe we have to wear gloves. Maybe we have to dip our hands in some uh, hand sanitizer first, but we could figure out a way. So I uh, hope you've all been well.